What's going on keepers? I'm Kane and this is Noodle and today we're going to be going over the top five best non-mammal pets. So if you're looking for something other than a dog, a cat, a rabbit, or a hamster, you may just want to stick around and see what we've got in store. Number five is going to be guppies. Now, really, there's a lot of freshwater fish that can be pretty easy, but to me, guppies is just king. Now, some people are going to be like, well, guppies are boring. Guppies are common. Guppies are awesome, okay? There's a reason why guppies are so popular. They're literally the perfect fish. Not only do you have so many different color variations, not only can you have 200 in a 10 gallon tank and they won't die, which I don't suggest but I'm just throwing that out there and they go with plants they're not aggressive they're easy to catch they breed like mad now don't get me wrong there are a thing a few things that go with having a fish tank as far as keeping it cycled and all that but for the most part guppies are really easy and they're a great fish like I said there's a lot of great freshwater fish but for me guppies are one of my favorites and they're definitely a great pet Number four is gonna be the bearded dragons. Now bearded dragons are pretty cool. They're super laid back. Now there's a trade-off here. One thing about bearded dragons, they do require a little bit more. You have to have a heat lamp. You need, you don't need UVB. UVB is a requirement. And you have to have vegetation and insects. It's a good thing to give them calcium. They could use a bigger enclosure, like this is a four by two by two. It's 120 gallon. Some people would say that you only need a 40 gallon, but me personally, I think that you need at least this as minimum. But as you can see right here, this is why Bearded Dragon gets number four. They're so chill. If you're in, if you're new into reptiles or experienced, or you just want something chill to hang out with you, you can't go wrong with a Bearded Dragon. They're super laid back. They're super friendly. There's people that's been bit by bearded dragons, but it's not a common occurrence. If they bit you, it's probably because they thought you were food. <laughs> bearded dragons are awesome. This is Rex, my wife's bearded dragon, and he's, he's a sweetheart. But definitely, number four on our list is going to be bearded dragons. Alright, number three. So for me, number three is going to be a ball python. And it's not first on my list, and it's not last on my list. And there's good reasons why. But, ball pythons are truly amazing. They're very friendly snakes. It's very uncommon to bite. They're easy to care for. They don't get a whole lot bigger than this. This isn't a full grown male, but this is a pretty good reference right here. They're really chill. They come in a million different color variations. Basically, all you need is moisture and a little bit of heat for a hot spot. And other than that, these guys are easy. I keep mine in a rack system. You can keep them in uh, vivariums and enclosures. They're, they're just a great all around pet. I really love ball pythons. This is truly one of my favorites and I don't think you can go wrong with it. All right, so number two is gonna be where I got my start in reptiles. And this is definitely something you can't go wrong with as well. So for our number two pick, it's gonna be crested geckos. Crested geckos are very beautiful. They're very friendly. They are jumpy, so you have to be careful. It is not uncommon for them to just take a leap into nowhere, but the care is super easy on them. This girl right now is really pretty. She's fired up. Fired up means that they're darker. So sometimes they get darker and their colors are more vibrant, and then sometimes they're more dull. But this is our female, and she's, she's a great animal. I love her to death. Crested geckos, you don't have to have heat. They stay at about room temperature. And you don't have to have your EVB, but you can provide it for them. They're a nocturnal animal, or some people say, uh, I think it's, I can't remember the name for it, but they're active in the evenings and in the mornings. And um, as far as their diet and life goes, they need uh, 
Uh, basically, it's a powder supplement that you mix with water once every two days, and you can feed them gut loaded crickets dusted in calcium powder if you want. But I know a lot of people that just feed the prepared diet and have no issues. This is a super easy animal to keep. It almost takes care of itself and it's great. You can keep them in planted tanks. You can display them. They're beautiful. They're friendly. And as you can see, it's very stunning. So this was my first reptile and will always have an ear and dear spot in my heart. Number two, definitely crested geckos. For our number one pick for the best non-mammal pet, is actually going to be a tarantula. I know some of you have already probably clicked off the video, but that's all right because I'm fixing to tell you why. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, easier than a tarantula. Now we'll post a picture right here of me holding one. They can be held. Most groups require you to say hold at your own risk before you can even make a post. But I feel like that goes with anything and doesn't need to be said. Nonetheless, they're not really made to be held. So we'll go ahead and get a close up of a couple of them right here that's out. So you can see Big Daddy right here. This is our Brazilian black tarantula. And over here, this is our red leg Mexican tarantula. That is scarlet. Now neither one of them are out right now on display, but I see these all the time. And I'm gonna tell you why they're great and why I think they're the best non-mammal pet. Because you don't hardly have to do anything to this animal animal invertebrate you get what I'm saying you build an enclosure as you can see you can build a beautiful enclosure now sometimes you will get some species that will just demo that thing but for the most part they don't bother it so you can be really creative they don't take a big enclosure so it's a small space so basically anybody can own one everybody's got space for this much room they don't require a lot of care I fill up their water bowl once a week and I feed them insects, mainly crickets, once every one to two weeks. And that's it. Other than that, they're not really made to hold. You can handle them, but they're mostly made for display. You know, if people enjoy keeping fish, you don't get your fish out and play with your fish. You can have a tarantula and you don't have to get it out and hold it to enjoy it. They come in a wide variety of colors. They're very beautiful. They're slow to move and you can just have a lot of enjoyment out of this. A lot of people are gonna think it sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, once you own one, you're gonna want another one because they're great, they're a fantastic pet. But that wraps it up for us. So as shocking as it is, my number one pick for the best pet, non-mammal pet, is gonna be the tarantula. All right, everyone, I appreciate you watching till the end and I hope you enjoyed our picks. Today's video was almost just as much of a best beginner pets as it was best non-mammal pets. But either way, I think we had five great picks and I hope you enjoyed them. Now, of course, this is gonna be five animals that I own, but that's because I think they're the best and that's why I own them. Um, I'm not gonna be doing non-stop top fives, but I do think they're pretty cool and I'd like to hear your feedback. Are you interested in seeing some more top fives? Or do you think they're just kind of okay? Either way, let me know down in the comments. But as always, I appreciate you guys watching. And always remember, your hobby can bring you joy, but only Jesus can bring you peace. I hope to see you guys in the next one.